Right. Oh, I Actually, read. I do yes, have a no. question for you. Have you ever heard of Thai food tea? Yeah. We just got that <laughs> shit in Canada, bro. It's it's delicious. You guys have been hoarding that shit. You've been bogarting that on us <laughs> over there. Back across. Right, we're, 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 we're on now, by the way. You just kicked off the podcast with asking about Thai food tea. But you, so tea is a, tea is a contentious subject. Not with me, but with my, mm. my, girl, my girlfriend. So she Why? can only be served one kind of tea. And you serve oh. anything else, she detects it. She will not. It's like, no, get that shit away from me. And I, I, Thai food is one of them. So she'll only have English breakfast tea. Maybe there's one other. So Maybe you mean so other. she only wants Thai food, English breakfast? No, not Thai food, English breakfast no. tea. Oh, but Thai food is it's, an accepted brand. No, I don't think so. Not to her. Oh, oh wow! No, it's the same. No, I'll drink anything. I don't give. I make weak tea shit because I can't be bothered. <laughs> just I want my tea now, so I can't be bothered to stir it very much. I can't be bothered to let it, let it, um, let it brew. Like three minutes so is just, too you know, long for you. Fucking way too long, mate. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I put the tea bag in. Yeah. The tea bag goes in. The water goes in. It gets three stirs, it, if that. And then I squeeze the tea bag and take it out. It's done in about five seconds. You know how long that farmer worked to grow that tea? And you don't even let it steep in the water for five minutes, man. Like, do you not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I know, um, like, I, I, I look at my watch when I put the tea bag in and I count to the second because the three minutes is quite, quite long. Yeah, that's quite but, but anyway, I thought it was fun uh, that Thai, thai food tea had, had finally shown up in Canada. Yeah. Okay, well, congratulations. I'm happy for you. Thanks, brother. <laughs> right. I've got a, I'm, I'm very glad, right? I've got a, I've, one, I've got a Canadian captured on the podcast. And two, I've got a Canadian who's uh, x mill very similar background to myself and to many other. To a lot of the listeners as well and the viewers, right? And the, the point of I'm very happy about the second piece is because I know predominantly I'm going to get a good, honest opinion from you in general, generally speaking. Right? I can I can believe that what you're saying is what you believe, right? Which isn't yes, always sir. the case, mate. right? What the fuck is going on in Canada? So, and the reason I ask is uh, the way I see Canada at the moment is that. And, and, and this has been building over the last few years. Don't get me wrong, I don't have, I'm, I'm not monitoring Canadian news all of the time, but it sort of came yeah. on my radar first because I started listening to, I'm being aware of Peterson, Jordan Peterson, obviously. Right. And then he made Bill C- C16 very famous. And uh, Trudeau came on the scene or was on the scene already then. So the way I initially perceived Trudeau to be in the government to be, was to be very progressive. I'm not, saying that in either a positive or a negative light. In fact, being progressive is more positive than negative, you can argue. I'll happily argue that, right? But there's, like like conservatism, you can go too far to the right, you can go too far to the left. Okay, it's been a, so you had the C-16, then you've had, there's just been a few things with Trudeau and that government, which just are lending themselves to far right activities, like actions and uh, policies and strategy not yeah, or action or actions that don't they don't tally up with the way they present themselves or he's present himself as progressive. For example, um, you had last year with the with the, the the trucker protest. Was it last year or this year? Earlier this year, the trucker protests were and which is yeah. which you know, protests are protests, right? But then the significant action around that from the government was when they they closed down access to funding. So one was through GoFundMe. They uh, they restricted access to bank accounts of the of the truckers, but also people connected with the truckers. So second, third in line, fa- not in line, family connections. Bro, bro, <laughs> they just they just disciplined an Ottawa cop who donated forty bucks. It's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. So you know, so in that example. If I've got an uncle or a cousin or a brother, and that happened today in, in the UK, the, the equivalent is, but I, maybe I don't want to be a protesting with the truckers, protesting anything. But my brother decides he is, and he's that way inclined. He protests. So my, my accounts get stopped like this, <coughs> and I'm innocent. If there was any guilt in the first place on any part. So that was the second one, um, which was crazy. I mean, GoFundMe were at fault for doing that, and, and, and just the, the, the actions of the government just like, 
was, oh my God, that is frightening. Frightening what they're doing there to exert that level of control over a protest, right? And then the other one I've just seen, which is a little bit of a strange one, I literally saw it this morning. And the, the bill relating to authorization of um, euthanasia has just been amended. Is this on your radar? Yeah. A little so, bit, um, but uh, uh, not, like, I don't know. Like, I'm still... It's all right. We don't have to go. We're not going to go in depth on any of them, but this is all leading up right. to me asking you what the fuck is going on. Yeah. And so this 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 bill, basically, for people who aren't aware, it's around how and when euthanasia can be authorised in Canada for right, people who right. want to be euthanized, right? And two of the stipulations before were, before the change were, they had to be terminally ill. I'm pretty sure they had to be terminally ill, and they, they had to be, like, basically no other option for them to be able to live comfortably or in any right. form. They now remove those two from the provisions of the bill. So you don't have to be terminally ill and there can be other options, right? And a, a, an exact, in the article I read, an, an, an example is this past over the last couple of months of how extreme it's gone. There's a, 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 a terminally ill woman, suffer, no, 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 no. There's a woman, not terminally ill, but suffers from extreme allergies. And she's unable to afford her own place. Her home is state provided, I believe. Um, and she's, na- uh, she's unable to afford to move. And she needs to move because the circumstances in where she lives now have changed environmental circumstances. So her allergies have been triggered <coughs> all the time, all the time. She can't afford to move and the state won't move her, right? So she said, I'd like to be euthanized, please, because I can't stay here and this is excruciating. Okay, and the state turned around and said, yes. It didn't move her. They killed this woman. She's gone. No, it doesn't exist anymore. This is like, you can find this online. It's mm. absolutely uh, just crazy. Crazy, another crazy decision. So come back to the question. What's going on? How do you perceive it? And how would you say most Canadians are perceiving such, this situation? So there's a lot to unpack there The you know, I'll bookend what you were just saying, though, in that uh, they offered a veteran uh, assisted suicide when he said that the terms the Veterans Affairs had offered him weren't to what he his expectations. Big. It was a huge deal over here a couple of weeks ago. Um, so, you know, I think I think in that case, you know, there's some people that see the uh, right to to die as uh, as a mercy and there's others that see it as a solution to problems right and, and so right now to, just a just a you know i'll i'll use a broad brush on 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 everything and say that you know what you're seeing in canada <clears throat> you know is is also being played out around the world where any of these world economic forum guys and girls manage to get uh, any power and you know, I, I don't believe Canada is unique right now in that we're dealing with a uh, authoritarian uh, uh, regime, perhaps uh, spreading its wings, finding its feet, uh, you know, because we're traditionally a democracy. Um, you know, we still uh, have certain aspects of our of our culture, I guess, that, you know, lend lean us in certain directions. I'm not sure, you know. Most of the Canadians that I talk to don't get it. You know, there's a, there's not agreeing with it. There's being against something. And then there's also not getting it. You know, like um, this morning I was listening uh, to some stuff about, you know, now they want to regulate the internet. And, uh, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and then, they, you know, so you say, well, what does that mean? And so then the government, you know, said, well, uh, we're not going to come after your YouTube videos or your uploads on Instagram. And what are they meaning? Well, they're talking to the average person right now who has a, a, their Instagram and they load videos, right? So then they say, they said, well, we're only going to go, you know, target anyone who can make money. Okay. Well, what is, and what does that mean? Well, it means now if you are trying to make a living, uh, you know, say doing a podcast, now they're going to, you're going to come under, uh, uh, censoring laws, perhaps, uh, you know, because they got to make sure, uh, you know, that they get their cut of revenue and also that, they, you know, they monitor what's being said like this. And this is how they're presenting it. But, you know, uh, you know, you'd have to prove hate speech, you know, they all the things that they say in, in the legalese. 
Um, but then you know what they said right underneath it? Uh, there's a sentence that, that all politicians around the world love, and it says it's notwithstanding. And what that means is, you know, all that stuff we just said, and I, you know, this is how I interpret it as a politician, because I was one. What they've just said is they gave you all the, like, you know, re read the, uh, you know, read the agreement when you, on your iPhone type, type expl explanation of, to explain away all your fears. And then because you didn't read to the end, they threw in a sentence that basically said, by the way, we can null and void this whole thing at the wave of a, of a pen. And, um, and so, you know, um, you know, earlier we were talking about a book and the cause, and I, maybe that's why I'm so into the, into that time frame and that, and that, and, and, and what was really going on or, you know, in the headlines and what we can gleam out of the past is it's like, you know, at what point is it enough that of my money for, to, for you to do what you want to do? I get it. We are, we're all in this together. Um, but you know, there's a difference between us working together and you basically telling me I have to give you money so you can spend it on stuff I don't give a shit about. Um, that's, you know, and we get it. Every government in the world does it. That's, you know, it's extortion and it's, um, and it's, you know, it's manipulation and all that. And that's, you know, that's the way the world goes around. But, but, you know, we, you know, we being the, the royal we, the, the West, so to speak, you know, we had started to kind of change the agreement. Right. And you and I grew up in societies where, you know, you couldn't say what you wanted and you couldn't get away with what you wanted. But, you know, you were allowed a certain amount of free will to try and find your way, you know, so to speak. And, uh, you know, and you were allowed to have an opinion. Right. And and so it just seems like they're working on on ways to to limit those things for us now. And so what's worth fighting over? I don't know. I don't know. I, I got my legs blown off for the things that I thought are worth it. Democracy, free will, free speech, um, equality. You know, these are progressive things too, right? Like I thought, uh, you know, equality, uh, you know, freedom to explore who you are, right? Whether you want to dye your hair blue and call you Zizer, Cool, man. Like I, I don't, I'm not against any of that, but we're at, we're, we're in a time right now where, you know, they, they seem to want to punish anyone that doesn't agree uh, with their point of view. So, so, you know, I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on it. You know, um, I take it a little bit personally uh, in some aspects that, you know, I've talked about before, uh, but you know, um, it, it's just, you know, it just seems like, uh, like they're working on an agenda that isn't necessarily their own either, you know? If that makes sense. Uh, dig into that. What do you mean? Well, well, you know, like I said earlier, right? Like the World Economic Forum. If you know anything about the Davos <laughs> thing, you know it. What Trudeau and, and his government and, and are doing is it's playbook from from their way of thinking and their way of strategizing, and and that's the other thing we got to remember, guys. Like we're not dealing with people that get up every morning and go like, Hey, let's think of something to do today. We're dealing with strategy that's been put in place for decades and deck. Like this, is, they've been working on this since Trudeau's dad was prime before Trudeau's dad was prime minister, you know? Um, and that's how strategy works. And that's how, you know, the world goes around. So what we, what we have to realize and, and who are we? Well, we're the opposite opinion. I, I hope, you know, and that, you know, government isn't all the government is meant to work for the people. You know, the government is meant to listen to the people, uh, not dictate to the people. And maybe, maybe though, you know, hear you what I think too, maybe it's always been the other way around and we just didn't realize it before we all had an iPhone, you know? So I don't know, man, like, uh, like I believe that Trudeau believes in what he's doing. And that to me is, is uh, makes it unexplainable in some ways, but also makes it perfect. It makes perfect sense when you look at it from, from the tactical and strategic point of view. I did not, we were going to go, I did not think we were going to go down the world economic forum rabbit hole so soon, if at all. <laughs> Bro, no, it's I, just... I, the, the problem, not the problem. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, and you know, um, and uh, 
And I think that kind of uh, thinking around Joe Public in terms of, uh, okay, there's, there's bigger things afoot. The, the problem is when you mention uh, world economic forum and, and strategizing across, you know, looking at looking at the world as instead of um, looking at the West, instead of uh, um, countries with their own agendas and their own strategies moving forward in different directions, which for the most part they are, as opposed to looking at it from the World Economic Forum strategy perspective, which is one that, okay, there are certain high level aims and targets and intent that yeah. they're trying to achieve in, certain, in right. very specific areas of each, of each, not each country, but in very specific areas. Well, which, just for which, example, which, well, I'm just saying, for example, if you just look at um, all the farming changes and regulations around the world, the Dutch, Sri Lanka, Jamaica, maybe Jamaica, maybe I'm wrong about that one. Canada is moving towards this now. It's starting to take hold in Canada and America, this change in how you're supposed to farm. And it's, it's, it's slashed crops by a third, in some cases a half. Um, they're banning <laughs> certain ways of growing food in certain places, just out of nowhere, you know. And a lot of it is to do with, they, to, to fight climate change, but uh, they say to reduce gases or, you know, the way the food is made. And, and I get it. I get all that, you know, but when you implement it in a way that shows that you're reducing capacity and then you're going to turn around and talk about shortage. Well, these two things don't, don't, don't mesh. Right. And like all things, trends go around the world in different ways. So, so what I think is, you know, cause they all gather together and they talk and they're just, you know, they're just talking ideas and they just go home with the ideas. And then, you know, you see it around the world with, light rail uh infrastructure and stuff you know every city that's trying to build a light rail has the same problems and it's you know and, it, and it, it's just how business is done in a lot of ways and so yeah sorry i no, i'm just no, trying to give right. you examples of of why i see it so broadly you know what i mean when i see like from the from the high point if you if you compact all these decisions right together you know you have to see like there is a pattern that that emerges and some of them are just meant to be good ideas to try out. But, you know, a lot of them are, all right, are things that they know. Like, we know how to grow food in the world. Like, if you know, if we know how to do anything. We know how to grow food. Like, why would suddenly changes have to happen that would reduce crop yields at a point when people are starving? Like, so what, the what, is the, what, are the, what are the what are the changes in farming that have been happening? There? And what the, yeah, what are the changes in farming and policy um, around the world? So, go, go to... I, I believe it was Holland, Netherlands um, had a big protest about this and, and it was just, it's to do with the type of fertilizers and uh, the type of growing methods like in or in Sri Lanka, I believe it's Sri Lanka. I might be the wrong country, but um, they basically implemented organic growing methods on farmers that didn't even know how to do that. First of all, and then second of all, <clears throat> you know, they just did it you know, to, to say like, oh, we're going to be all organic. Well, okay. But you know, you, you, you completely changed the, 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 the way the food is grown and, and how it's, you know, how, how, it, how you get to the crop yields that have been sustainable to, to feed people. Right. And you, if you do that knowingly, like you can't, you can't uh, argue away the consequences. Right. And, and if it keeps happening in different countries, you know, like these are, these, this is what I'm saying, like these are ideas that are tried and the only result is a reduction in, in, in yield now when, you know, a thought out plan or a plan that is meant to be beneficial could do both, right? You can ease in the new ways and ease out the old ways and try and keep your crop yield at maximum level. To, to force it, you know, right? It's almost like an orthodoxy, right? That, so they have to, they have to force success right through legislation and that's what they that's what i mean like their strategy is legislation and they look for weak points in the system uh you know so you know why why are so many states arguing about gender fluidity and all this stuff well because these are points that that can that can stir up a lot of a lot of issues around uh around that stuff you know and it's a very hot topic so so you know when you when you look at strategy and thinking and politics and business all through that lens i just i believe that there's an agenda being uh played out and you know and and they're they're just implementing their policies to what end well i mean why would why would anyone do that 
I mean, it's, it's a way to, it's a way to, you know, tilt the system in their favor for whatever their ultimate goals are. Yeah, that's the problem I have with it. I don't, that's, that's the problem with, 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 um, with the, with these kind of discussions is, uh, yeah. I mean, you can't deny that the world economic forum is an unbelievable in, influence. Uh, like, it's tip of the iceberg to what we think we know compared to what the influence it does have um, on on organisations that have even more influence, i.e. profit-making companies and organisations, right? Which are the backbone of governments, administrations, and undoubtedly, undoubtedly. But the, when I try and think about this, I try and think about look, to, to what end, like to... Right. So how how where does the benefit come from? Because because I don't think it's useful for a government or an administration or a and other organization, big or small, to have a to have a population below it, or a you know, a, a, yeah a population below it who are unpredictable. They want they want things to be predictable, right? And when you look at the 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 left versus left and right the the the, the progressive um, ideology and all the drama that's creating it, which is a minority of people um, all that that creates in mainstream society that makes it unpredictable and yet that yeah. fan is being continually flamed like and being allowed to the media of the media are a fan of that flame but they're being yeah. allowed to and they're, because they're they're making money from it. Right? So you can't even blame the media. But like, why is that being? I don't understand why that's being allowed to happen. I don't understand why that's being not being clamped down on. Um, because, like I said, it makes makes things unpredictable. Right. The best thing for a government, so, especially a government with nefarious ideas, is for to have a predictable, yeah. a predictable population because then they can ease more well, easily influence. Well, you there's a certain amount of predictability in unpredictable. Right. And what, and what do I mean? Like, you don't know what they're going to do, but you know, they're going to act out. Right. So you stimulate them the right way. Um, and you say the right things and you get them mad about the right stuff. And that has nothing to do with them particularly. And, you know, they might just unpredictably show up at a, at a Supreme court judge's house, or they might just unpredictably show up at, you know, at a right wing uh, politician's house. Um, and so that unpredictability has become a tool for them. You know, they'd rather burn down some cities and be they and be kings of of a of a of shit mountain, right? Then lose and you know and I can't, you know I can't fault that instinct and I can't fault that uh, that thinking. I guess I okay. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> I can I can fault it, but as you said, why do they want this unpredictability? Why are they? stirring these pots and it's and it ultimately it's to win and implement agenda okay what agenda right uh green and uh all that has been the thing like it's it's like it's it's like they they keep shortening the time frame oh and only eight years uh this that and that's gonna happen but yet like there's no 400 foot wall around new york yet and i or london um or paris and, you know, so I got to wonder, like, well, they know that, like, it's all numbers to these people, right? Like, then all this stuff, like you said, profitability, accountability, uh, predictability, all, all the things that stocks do, right? And these but, stocks are always running. But on the, but on the, on, on the green, on the green stuff, on the climate stuff, right? I it, do not think it's more likely that it is a, it is an, I, not an ideology. It is a, it is something that has been, hijacked and hijacked and taken advantage of by yeah. companies to make money because they make, they'll make money from oh. it. for example yeah. in the same way like veganism has been hijacked in the same way that uh, trans activism has been hijacked uh, by not not hijacked hijacked is the wrong word being taken advantage of by people who are just there to make yeah. money so and then they manipulate they can manipulate um, data they can manipulate uh, the science behind it or the presentation, the science behind it, to try and reinforce yeah. what they say in the short term, because in the long term it doesn't work out. So, you know, I recently had a conversation with a guy called Ben Pyle, who's a, a climate researcher and a climate, uh, a climate change activist, as in against, uh, no, not climate change activist. He's, he's against green policy 
bad green policy, right? Much right. to your point, it's too short. They're trying to do it too short, and plus they're they're, they're um, exaggerating what the impact's going to be if there are going to be any impact. Um, blah 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 blah. Uh, where was I going with that? What was I saying then? Uh, I think I the dichotomy, <laughs> the dichotomy of the of the green movement, right? Like like. But you know what? Here's what just one thing in reversal. You know, like you got guys on the right, and this drives me nuts. They'll complain that they charge their Tesla with a generator. And it's like, you know, like that's not the point, right? Like it, the point is to eliminate a level of carbon production that is a problem. Because if we all want cars and all we all want to get around and go wherever the fuck we want to go, we got to like cut that. Because what is that? That's like 30% they say of the world's CO2 is for just from a personal car. And that's around the world, right? So if we can eliminate that, that's 30%, even if 3% of that 30 goes up into the level of power generation. Like that's like, it's, that's what I mean by the numbers, right? Like it really makes sense to the green. If you accept that all technology is beneficial, like anything to produce electricity should be stomped on mass produced and cheapened, like made as cheap as possible. You know, there's like paint that it can produce solar energy now. You just paint it on stuff. You paint it on a window. They're making windows now with a solar, see-through solar tint. That So now there's no excuse for any glass skyscraper to not produce a certain amount of its own energy at this point. With solar, with solar, just with solar, each building in Manhattan could probably produce up to 5% of their own energy. Oh, that's just 5%. Motherfucker, that's 5% per building. Make that a law. You want to fucking impress me? Make it tax free to do anything green to my house. Right? But they don't do that, right? As you said. So, so what's the rush? Well, the rush is to dominate and control the markets, right? And that is the ultimate point of power. It's the ultimate point of politics. It's the like whoever's got the conch, whoever's got the wand, whoever's turn it is, um, is allowed to call the shots. And part of me feels like our generation, like I'm 45, I think Trudeau is 47, something like that, 48. I don't think he's 50 yet. He might be 50. But it almost seems like the generation that built Silicon Valley and invented the Mac and the, and the PC and, and, and the, the Teslas, they're like they're, they're mad that they don't live in the future like they thought they were going to in Back to the Future. Like, we're, like they don't have flying cars. You know, they don't breathe, breathe, breathe perfectly clean air. <laughs> And it's like they're mad about it, right? It's like there's like there's this almost continuous backlash now about like we're not where we're supposed to be. Well, says who? You know, like that's that's the problem with that thinking, right? Like why why wouldn't you design an integrated system that would mesh together, right, and let go of the old as you implemented the newer and better technology? But they stomp on it, right? They, you know, another example I think of, brother, is there's this huge pay scandal with the Canadian uh, federal employees. And one of the things that they did was they implemented this pay system that was just such a colossal piece of shit and failure. It's like, it, you know, it, you, you know, you, I, I, I can't help but relate it. Like, even though we're talking nuclear reactors or solar panels, right. You can, you can boil it down to like, you know, like it, it's like projects that can't fail. And why can't they fail? Is because, because we said so. And, and uh, yeah, so, you know, and, but are we unique in history to be in this moment? I don't believe so. Right. I believe that we're just the ones that are dealing with this type of situation in this cycle. Um, no, I don't know. Mate. Just... I think we are. I think we are unique. And I, I, I think, the situ I think the situation itself, like if you to summarize it, isn't different. And so like um, uh, people want better. Uh, people yeah. are concerned about, uh, the world, people who are concerned about money, people are concerned about energy, people are concerned about transport, governments are concerned about the people <laughs> um, and <laughs> governments are trying to maintain power uh, but what is different now and I think I think I do I do think a huge amount of this, I think in, I think in a quarter of a century time we look back I think a huge amount of if not most of the re most of the reason most of the reasons, most of the, of the blame for where we are now and how, how crazy the world seems in terms of polarization and the instability 
of, in inverted commas, the first world countries and the West predominantly. You can't, you can't look at China and say they're as unstable as us. No fucking way. Russia may be as unstable as us, but, but China is probably the most stable of the, you know, of the first world countries there is in the world right now, or the major ones. China, I'd say, probably, right? Compared to America, less stable. I can't say for Canada, I don't know. UK, less stable. I, I, that's how I'd argue it. Anyway, a lot of the European countries are the same. But the main difference is, and what, what is going to be attributed to, I think, is the, just the, the, the rapid change in technology and communication yeah. since the beginning of the century. And, and accelerated when smartphones came about and social media came about. And I think right, those right. two things have, have just, we are seeing like a quarter of a century's worth of, of um, you know, undulation in society and government and rest and rest condensed into, what, what are we? When, was it, when, was, when did Facebook come about? 2007? iPhone was yeah, it came out the year I got. It came out the year I got blown up. Yeah, oh, right. yeah like the crisis. Yeah, so before that though, we had Campus Kiss and Squareface or what was that? Uh, MySpace, whatever. But yeah, like it became. Where, main, did you it, just say? Did you just say Squareface? <laughs> yes, I can't remember. I remember that like, I was uh, I was in Kabul when I was on the computer typing on those things. Uh, it was something you did when you were overseas and bored, right? You'd flirt with girls on on the computer. Uh, you didn't do it when you got home, though, right? You're too busy with real girls, right, or, or whatever. But <laughs> but I agree with you that. But th- but when I say we're not unique, imagine when uh, radio came out, right? And you'd never heard anyone talk except for this person right in front of you, right? And uh, I forget what it was, but there was a big broadcast. I think it was under Lyndon B. John. No. Who was the president during World War II? Why do I always forget his name? Uh, Eisenhower. Eisenhower, was it not? No, no. World War II. Uh, the guy in the wheelchair. Oh, my gosh. He is Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Um, oh, Roosevelt. Yeah, God's sake. Um, Sorry. Sorry, Americans. What was I, now, what was I talking about? Um, um, not different. We're not different to... Oh, to, to so I it. think he was the first president to be heard by all Amer- like by it across the country at the same time because he, he did his first fireside chat uh, on the radio and that was a big deal the queen did a an address in 1920 something on tv and it, or there's something the queen did to that to this day is the most watched thing ever um but it, anyway, oh, not, no 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 not to this day not to this day because the funeral got viewed by five one five point one billion people Right. So the second most viewed thing ever, I think, is something she did as well when she was younger. But my point is that like Luther and the printing press, right? Uh, The invention of writing and the ability to write it on paper, and carry it somewhere. Right. So it's um, I keep losing. I just had a truck drive by and it totally threw me. Um, I think that you're right in that things are compressing. but we're not the first to have to deal with a situation like this, just maybe the speed, right? So just the same as like before 19 or 18, whatever, the fastest thing was a, was a horse. Uh, downhill, maybe a chariot. <laughs> um, people thought when they invented trains, anything above 36 miles an hour, your body will explode from the friction with the, with the molecules in the air, if they even understood molecules. So, and people like you and I invented these. Like, look at this, bro. We're talking across the ocean. Like the the veterans of of World War II and Korea couldn't do this, you know. But they could do it on the phone, you know. So I think, I think, you know, we're not unique in that we we're dealing with a situation that feels like it has ramifications for the entire planet. You know, we're we're definitely not the first to feel that way, but it's the first time mm-hmm. for us. You know, our What's granddaddies. Go on, go on, sorry. Well, our, our granddaddies fought hard, man. Ours, not theirs, ours. There's less of us than there is of them. And by them, I mean, we know exactly who them is now, right? Again, you know, we were buddies for a bit and now we're not, right? So there's always a 10 to 1 disadvantage when we're up against these guys. And we still stack them. And what I mean by that is, we just do. And maybe this time we don't, but I'm, I can't help, but, and I'm sorry, this is the gunfighter in me, right? <laughs> I can't help, but 
approach the situation like I would any other uh, conflict in my life, right? Whether it's at the park, walking the dog, in politics, uh, or on the battlefield, it's just up a couple levels, right? And right now, people are drawing lines in the sand, and and now hard harder decisions are going to have to be made soon, right? So as that window is closing, you know things are getting compressed in time and space, right? As you said, and it's digital. It's in space. They got space rockets now. For all we know, someone does have a fucking like regiment of space troops up there ready to drop on your capital fucking building at, at a moment's notice. <laughs> I don't fucking know, bro. Could you imagine from that game, right, where a bunch of chiefs dropped out of the sky onto Parliament Hill here in Ottawa? We'd be fucked, bro. JTF is good and the RCMP are good on the scene. We're talking about superheroes here. Anyway, I know, I know. I'm getting crazy. But this is how you win battles, you. This is how we're going to beat them, you. Because we're allowed to think, and they're not. One of the Sorry, dramas at the minute, one of, one of the problems I get at the is that, no, no, it's all right. One of the problems at the minute is, I think one of the, probably a big change that we haven't seen in the past, I'd argue, uh, this significant, is that people, and I'm talking Joe Public, like you and me, yes. people uh, are, more, uh, are, are more liable to, to form an opinion around something and be behold to that opinion based on much less information than they would have in the past. So people, will, people now have got opinions on something entirely right. formed around a few headlines they see over a period of weeks on a social media platform. Yeah. And, 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 and nothing else haven't ever right. gone into the article or decided to read a bit more on it. They, they literally, they, like the opinions they hold, they, they fire so much emotion into them and they're so beholden to them. And, and it's such a, it's perceived as such a bad thing online anyway. And to right. cancer comes from that, to change your mind is seen as bad. It's a bad thing. Oh, you change your mind and you can't fucking do yeah. that. You have, to, you have to stick with a team. That, they, that, but, but, the opinions that they have are formed around a like a very like a what you call it like a glass like a glass floor if you like it's just bullshit it's just bullshit and yeah. and they you can't engage in conversation around that you can't you can't engage in discussion around that it doesn't want to be had debate doesn't want to be had yeah. so you can't you can't inform your own opinion discover whether you're right or wrong or, you're, or not whether you're right or wrong or whether you think you need to change your opinion or not and also because of that reason people are much less able to spot the bullshit from the facts yeah the, you yeah know, from well, the way it's spread in the media you the, the current the, the the current regimes that we're talking about right trudeau uh i don't know how do you guys see your new prime minister like are they conservative or liberal what are they uh let's trust conservative right so she right wing so to speak right you know like they're they're yeah, they're yeah. an orthodoxy right like they're you know, it's like trying to argue with a priest or trying to argue with, uh, you know, a, a math genius or something like they're never going to change their mind once they make uh, make their decision. And and that's what that's what we're dealing with. Right. Like it's it. You're right. It is thought control. And it is all that. Like you said earlier, in the conversation, like what isn't this something the right wing used to be accused of? And you're yeah, you're right, because power loves control. Right. Like like you said, like that's. And so the. Even if you come like, you know, into being fighting uh, what something, you know, you can't help but adopt it in order to beat it, so to speak, you know, and and maybe that's, you know, like that's what it, and, you know, going back to earlier. That's what I mean. Like if. You know, uh, I would say, like, to your point to the younger me, you know, just just think about what you're what you're saying before you make a decision. Right. You know, but is that something that I think now because of my age and experience? And is that something I could even teach my younger self? These are some of the things I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out in my own life, you know. So, you know, Hugh, I don't know. Do you have kids? Yeah, yeah. Two girls. Yeah. Two girls. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So so do I. I'm pretty sure our girls are around the same age. I think mine are 14 and almost 11. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're there. Yeah. yeah. So. Everything we're talking about is being pushed on them the most because what do they do? Whoever's in control, they and then, by they I mean them. Then them who are in control at any given time in history, 
put on my, my tin foil inside my hat, but don't worry. And the point <laughs> is that, you know, what, what's an example of that? Well, when the Soviets took over Russia, they turned all the kids against their parents. When uh, Ping felt his control going in China, he turned the kids all against their parents and their grandparents in many cases. Um, why would we think we were immune to that here? Right. And so what does that mean though? So when I was a kid, I remember being told like by, by a teacher, like when he was a kid, he would go to school and he would do marching and target shooting on what, like Thursday afternoons as part of like cadets at school. And then they got rid of that. And kids, when I was 18 said, the army is stupid. Who dies for land? You're an idiot, Midic, for joining or Jody for joining the army. You're brainwashed. This, that, new. And I'm like, okay, so, so then that happened, and then for a while the army was cool again, right? Because they needed us to do a few things, and so this is the cycle, you know. And and with my kids now, my 14 year old, um, she's just having trouble dealing with you know the, the education system, and and to me. Um, I dealt, I didn't deal well with, with the education system in Ontario. Uh, I'll tell you, I didn't finish high school. I need, I got more than the required credits, but not, I'm missing one of the most required credits, right? Like a mandatory. Um, but to me, like what scares, like, here's, here's what I'm getting at, bro, is I worry about what they're being taught at school. And I never thought I'd have to think that in my life. Yeah. So, I know what you, mean. you know, yeah. I, I keep bringing it back to these things because to me, there's no difference. Business is business, is politics, is life, is, is nature, is religion, is technology. It's all the same to me, right? I, I see technology and progress as things that chase the, the dragon. They're going to where the money is spent and, and the air is pure. And by, by they, I mean whatever technology is, right? It's been chasing its next high the, the, the whole time. AI was invented the second we realized we could count things and, and keep track of, of, of each other and stuff. Um, and the th like, we're the generation that went from analog to digital. That's what makes us different. And I think, you know, maybe that's our defining moment in our generation is that we are the ones that were born before and after the internet. There's a name right? for that generation. There's a name for What's it. What's that? Z Zenial. So Zenial is Zenials. You grew up with. I didn't even know we had a name. Yeah, has a name. Yeah, genuine. Oh, name and Russia Zenial. and Russia yeah. chose the Z. Oh, what are they trying to say now? Oh, okay. <laughs> See, you don't think it's related? It's all related, brother. <laughs> Trust me. You know, um, the gunfights we were in may have only counted on that street corner and that village or wherever, but the fucking ripples came all the way back here. You know. We brought back better health care to Canadians when we, you know, when they saw what was available. Uh, we got legal weed. Uh, you know, we were on the world stage for a bit. You know, we got so, the country got some uh, got some big ups. Um, but, you know, but now there's history behind all those actions. And there's the ramifications of those decisions, you know, and we we people like us have been ostracized for a while for the last while. And by us, I just mean. You know, you show the face you think you need to show. And, you know, and I think uh, currently society is um, going through its iteration, you know, like I'm ultimately human optimist. And that's what I mean when I when I yell things like they don't think like us. I mean, like, well, there's a reason we are at this moment right now. People like you and I, people like them have always been trying to figure things out. And we got here, you know, and. Why haven't we had a World War III with nuclear bombs? Well, like maybe we never will. Or maybe it's going to happen tomorrow. Like, I never thought I'd imagine what seeing a detonation would look like, right, in my lifetime. And part of the reason I joined the, the military, uh, you know, I even told my daughters this one night. <laughs> I said, guys, I just honestly didn't expect to live this long. So sometimes I don't have the answers because – you know, the world I grew up in, you know, we was a cold war, you know. Um, 
And so when you see what happened over there, right, in, in the past and stuff, I guess to, to, to come back full circle on this is, to me, this started in like, you could pick a point, right? But I think the current iteration we're in and the ideas we're dealing with, you know, it's almost like Paris uh, in, in the 17, in the 80s or whatever, like where they're just chopping off heads and fucking raping and pillaging their, whole, their own city. Uh, because ideas, inventing new calendars, inventing new languages, inventing new alphabets, and anybody who disagreed, chop off their head. Like that's where it can, that's where you know some of, a lot of this comes from. You know, Karl Marx and all those guys who went into the Soviet Union through. It's just that they're all ideas, you know, and and but that's where I, like that's where I draw the line. I said, well, if you want to talk about left and right, I know the left held the guillotine back in the day when those terms were, were coined and like, you know, I, I don't, despite my demeanor and my background, the reason I love politics, man, is I'm not allowed to bring a gun into, into the parliament or into city hall. Right. Like I'm already big enough. I can already beat up every politician in the room, probably at city hall by myself. Right. So <laughs> I get, I get it. Right. Like brute force is still brute force. You want to be loved or feared. Everybody picks feared over love. You know, be both if you can, but always be feared more than your love. You know, you, you made that point early in the conversation, right? About one thing you always learn with power is that, you know, it's yours to, to hold uh, and, and, and use with for the things that you want, right? So what does it look like they want? It looks like to me they want control, more control, right? Mm. But with the and, and, but but with the with the, the control being exercised at the minute, seems so although it's been exercised in a in what a traditionally like in a conservative sort of right wing way, it's actually it is it not it, it exerting what seem to be left pro, pro, progressive actions or they they, they they seem to be that they seem but seemingly that and obviously what you, sorry, they're not underneath. what 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 is, what are they doing that should be right wing sorry what do you mean by that so the way in which uh let's you know let's let's talk about let's look at canada again as an example the, the way in which let's let's look at canada as an example again like canada so the, oh, way, yeah, in, yeah. the way in which um Actions, initiatives, policies are being implemented is in a very, it seems to be in a, in a not in a very, in, in the traditional conservative right wing methodology, and but like exerting, but exerting progressive, so left things that look left, but in actual fact, like a not. So if you look at the policy change on, if you look at that policy change we talked about earlier about euthanasia, so on the right. face of it, that seems that that. So on the face of it, that could seem very progressive. Oh, we're letting people do what they want. They make their own decisions. Yeah. And if someone wants to take their own life, we're going to enable yeah, yeah. that. You can also look at it then from a, the opposite end of the spectrum and look at it in a, in, from a, I mean, to go back to the WEF, you can look at it from another, another end of the spectrum, which is, okay, actually, by changing that policy, this does lend itself to, um, uh, to uh, that E economy money making orientation because of course yeah yeah sick people sick people who are living off the state don't make the state money they cost the state money and right. so if, if they're not around for the, the 10 of 20 years of their life they should be living living if we can get rid of them and I, i'm not saying the, the, you know if, if they disappear at age 40 through euthanasia they're not getting supported for the next 20 years by the state and not making the state any money through tax or right. anything. They just they just fucking dead weight. Then we're saving ourselves, as in government, saving ourselves 20 years of expense. They can't get anything back from that. that that's I'm just right. that's the point they're making. It's well the, the, Well, you're not wrong though, bro. Like that's that's the business side of government, right? That's the business side of policy for the people in a sense that there's a mindset that looks for cost savings, no matter what. Right. Um, and so that's the clinical side. That's the, that's the number side of, of government. And, and, and the, and the, and the, the tricky part is finding where it's okay to offer someone the, the ability to end their life. Cause I, I, 
I've never thought about it. I've been in some dark places. I've had a lot of friends commit suicide and stuff. I personally don't, I don't get it. Like I want to, I want to wake up the next day, but that's me. I I've never been that dark, but at the same time, um, you know, maybe they'd be around if they were offered counseling before they, I don't, I, I don't know. Sorry. I'm not, <laughs> I see the point to this type of thinking because there are people that can languish in pain uh, for, for decades, right. Mm-hmm. Through medicine. Uh, and, and, you know, and quite often these people like that, you're right. And they know they're useless, right. You know, are they, they're, 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 they're not able to think beyond themselves. I don't know. I don't know how, how to argue it, but in a medical sense, I can see how it's, it's better to have the option than not have it as a doctor, I think as well uh, to yeah. present to a patient. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's just me arguing in a clinical, like non, you know, uh, but, you know, but like to me, it's, of course, it's, you know, it's like in, in battle, you, you know, we always said, save the last round for yourself because, you, you know, you don't want to get captured by these guys. Yeah, but that's like, that's if the, the, the last thing you can do, right? And to, to, to present it as option A, right? That's where the disconnect happens, you know, yeah. unfortunately. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, my point in the, on the euthanasia example, I mean, I'll get away from this in a yeah. minute, but the point, my point of that was not that they shouldn't be allowing euthanasia. My point was that in that, in that case, I give an example, right. instead, of, instead of doing everything to, to enable her life, yeah, they want to end they, it. They did it. They they went. Oh, yeah. See, it's they did yeah. the same to a veteran, bro. Like I said, they said he got a letter. Said, hey, or he was on the phone with some counselor or whatever, trying to argue his case. He said, you know what? Actually, I could offer you assisted suicide, because he was saying how depressed he is and how upset he is. And when I heard this recently, I I was so like, here's the thing, bro. Right? Like, you want to get so fucking crazy, mad, and filled with fire over this? Or do you know, you know, yep, typical, like typical, of course, someone like that would find their way to a position like that, you know, and I'm happy we caught her, you know. Um, We got about, we got about, go on, we got got about five, five, ten minutes left. Um, uh, When's the next elections in Canada? So. Uh, in Ottawa and Ontario, our province, we are about to have a municipal election in October. Uh, that's why I'm actually wearing this hat. Uh, uh, a guy from my regiment is uh, running in the uh, in a, to be mayor of a town up north, a uh, golden, a gold town, gold mining town. So it's you know I'm excited about that. And uh, then I got another guy from the regiment, and I when I say I, I mean he's a friend of mine. Uh, he's running in Newmarket down near Toronto to be a uh, city councillor down there. I was a city councillor here in Ottawa, so it's. I thought about running in this current election, uh, but uh, decided I stay focused on myself um, because um, very important to be have your shit together when you get into politics. Um, and then, but you know, we've been talking federal stuff. So Trudeau has a has a deal with the uh, one of the parties which gives him what they call a supply and demand uh, agreement, which means that as long as Trudeau or the liberal government delivers funding or uh, solutions to problems this other party is presenting, then they will support them in, in the House. And with that agreement, which is unprecedented in Canadian political history, maybe, I don't know, that basically the deal it lasts until October 2025 when we will have our next federal election. Holy shit. But we just had we just had it, yeah, right. So we just had a new conservative leader uh win uh, last weekend or the weekend before. And um and you know, I think that uh I think Canadian politics are gonna start to turn around, maybe. Right? Because that's the thing we gotta remember, right? Like for everything that comes up something will rise to challenge it, whatever it is. Um, And politics, that's true. And, you know, so we just, uh, we just have had a new conservative leader elected, like I just said, and that person is, um, 
a different type of politician in the sense that Canadians are used to. And um, we'll see what happens. You know, I think he's got a good shot at becoming prime minister. But, um, you know, as a gunfighter, I always give you 50-50 odds. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best I can do in a gunfight. <laughs> yeah. Um, when's the uh, go on? No, no, go ahead. When he, when is your website going to be ready for the coffee? And uh, oh, can I can I send you some Canadian dollars and you send me some coffee? Yeah. Well, let me double check. Uh, absolutely. By the way, so anybody listening, it's called Green Army Coffee. Uh, you can find it at green army coffee, one word dot CA. Um, it's up, it's there. There's some like, so you, what you call placeholders. So some of the stuff is placeholder, but it's active. So one thing that happened, like I said, is the prices have gone up on coffee, uh, and the type of coffee I'm, I'm trying to use. So we're going to have to bump up the prices a little bit in the near future. But for now, like it's, it's only a couple bucks Canadian difference, but that's my big spiel. <laughs> to make up for it not being done. It's like, oh, I'm saving you money because it's not done. Um, <laughs> so you can absolutely, we'll figure out something, bro. Like uh, after we're done the show, I'll just send you some. And um, if you like it, put in an order and I'll figure out a way to ship it to you. If I don't have international shipping, I'll make get Cause I got, I want to send some to a few other guys uh, that I know over there. So it'd give me a reason to get the shipping going. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'll just go with any, any expenses of it. I'm just looking at the website now. I like the website. I like oh, the website. Awesome. There's a there's a a brand of your no, they, they did a HR hour coffee we wrote back when I started did a HR hour blend and they called green nice. beret coffee they called green beret coffee not too not too dissimilar for them nice. they're fucking they're marines like we don't we don't like the green I'm, <laughs> I'm only joking the coffee's great the coffee's great the coffee's great get green army coffee over here yeah yeah I'll I'll definitely buy a bunch of it and if you want to if you need an address to send it all to if it's going to be cheaper for you for your mates I'm happy to take it and distribute it to them. If that's easier, mate. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, cool. What yeah. else have we got in the pipe? What else have we got in the pipeline apart from that? Anything? Um, well, you know, Q, like the the coffee is kind of like a rebirth for me, right? So, you know, the listeners, like just real quick, I was a master sniper, I got blown up in 07, came home. Uh, unfortunately, my name became a headline because I got wounded, even though it's supposed to be top secret that I was a master sniper. <laughs> um so I found myself in a position of having a voice for Canadian troops, so to speak. And, uh, and so I wrote a book, I was on a show, amazing race. I ran in an election. So I've been referring to this stuff. Um, and then I had a really, I hit, I hit the wall really hard. Uh, I got addicted to some, some recreational drugs or abused the drugs. Um, I was still dealing with addiction to painkillers from when I got hurt. Um, and I was in politics and I had, you know, uh, issues with my family uh, at the time. So, you know, the, the perfect storm, right? And uh, I was advised by people to stay in politics. Uh, I thought it was disingenuine. And um, despite, you know, uh, my personal choices or whatever, I wasn't performing to the, to the job the way I said I would. <laughs> and also, you know, I'll be honest, I, I was credited with winning part of winning my election was that I ran a very good guerrilla style digital campaign. Cause in 2014, you still kind of could cause they hadn't clamped down or they hadn't changed paywalled everything. So, um, so anyway, I stepped back from politics and public life. Uh, and in Canada, you know, it, it, I only have 10,000 Instagram followers and I'm, I'm known countrywide. So it's, you know, it's not <laughs> hard, but, but all that to say, um, as I'm, you know, I'm relatively drug free now. So I, I smoke a ton of weed. I barely take aspirins now. Uh, I'm, you know, because I'm trying to live, learn to live with the way things are. And, uh, and doing the coffee is, is me rebranding myself, so to speak, you know, and focusing on what I'm good at, which is the truths. And, and as great as I can be at talking to people and being everyone's voice sometimes, um, perhaps when I'm elected, or not, um, I need to focus on myself, right? And and so the coffee is me starting again. I, I have a podcast, so I'm planning to relaunch my podcast in the next 12 months. Um, you know, I What's got the a podcast called? Book, the Jody Minnick podcast. Yeah. It's, uh, it was, you know, I'll tell you right now, looking back, it was like a Rogan clone in certain aspects. 
um, with, you know, just some political diatribe thrown in because I was a politician when I was doing it. Um, but, you know, you know, like, like I said earlier, right. The advice I would have given myself is that life is long. And as a sniper, you know, I'm a little bit, I try to say I'm a little bit more patient, you know, than the average infantry uh, and stuff. So, you know, I, I always had a bit of an outlook on life, but I, you know, you can really, when you change your perspective on what life is worth and what, you know, what you're here for, which is whatever you want in our society to an extent, of course, we all, there are limits, but so I'm trying to give myself purpose again, you know, and I got two beautiful kids uh, that need their dad to, you know, be strong and they need their dad to, to be able to support them and they need their dad to, you know, be a father to them as they, you know, one's 14, one's going to be 11 soon. Um, they're becoming their own people in this crazy world. They're now part of this whole zeitgeist we talked about. So I'm trying to build a company around Green Army Coffee that, you know, will be a part of all aspects in life, you know, and build a bit of a, a brand around it. You know, I try to say it's kind of more like a lifestyle brand and that eventually my wardrobe will be dominated by it, but also, you know, just trying to be an example. If, if the role that the gods have given me through my, through my struggles have been to be here to talk to you, <clears throat> well, I'm only 45 and I still got a lot, of energy and I still have a lot of uh, ambition and I still have a lot to, to give, I think to my country and my community. And so I'm going to focus on doing those things uh, and just build the company, build the impact. Cause part of the reason I started the company, Hugh, is that our generation of soldier, I'm not going to say we're locked out. This is a Canadian phenomenon. I don't know what it's like in your country or the States. I mean, I I've heard it's better, uh, but I'm not, I don't know, but we have a real problem in Canada with the generations of, of veterans talking to each other and mentoring each other. And it goes back to, I guess, World War One and Two. you know, like the World War One guys told the World War Two guys, you weren't in a war. We were in a war <laughs> like, holy fuck, boys, a gunfight's a gunfight, isn't it? Um, but all that to say that my generation of soldier hasn't felt like we really have our own space. Right. Most of the legions are you know, many, a majority of our legions currently are civilian dominated. Uh, that's fine. Right. You know, and they run their version of the legion. So, um, you know, I'm trying to create safe spaces for us to be able to gather and talk about these things that we talk about and support each other. And, you know, like going back to my cup of coffee on the side of the mountain, um, you know, my second favorite cup of coffee would be probably talking to an officer at ISAF headquarters. And uh, I, I don't even remember, maybe Italian or anyway, he was a colonel, I think. And he's, you know, everybody's willing to sit down and have a coffee, with him, you know, and, and I really want to open up dialogue and I want to connect with the troops. And so that's the thing I'm focusing on people like me and those that want to be like me and, you know, and like us and want to wear a uniform want to be proud, want to have conviction, want to know how to work in a team, you know, want to, you know, want to stand for something because, you know, I, I feel like, um, like everything we've talked about, well, it works for us too. Like all those things that they can do, we can do too. We can just do it our way. And this is my way of doing the things that I think make my immediate AOR uh, more positive for me and people like me. And like you said, as much as I, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm all for pro progress and stuff, but I think, you know, control is an important thing. And, uh, and, you know, you need people to understand the difference between control and, and no control, you know? And, and so, you know, sorry, I, I kind of went preacher on you there, but, but the company is no, no, ultimately no, 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 no. focused on, on, you know, on the troops and, and bringing the troops, the ideas and the lifestyles and the, and the communication with, uh, with, you know, with, with allies. Uh, sorry, I went on another rant there. I can't help myself. I'm so excited. about Because <laughs> to me, it's all the same, right? You like to me, it's my podcast, the company, my kids, me, like it's all the same to me, right? It's history is going to look at it all the same. And so I want to, I want it all to do well, you know, and I'm, and I'm just, 
you know, even talking to you today, this has been such a great chat and, and stimulating conversation because, because it is, you know, and, and we need these things in our life. And, and I wouldn't be here, you know, if I wasn't working on the company, you know, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to talk to anybody, but, but, you know, I'm looking for reasons to get in front of people. And, you know, so that's why the company is so important. Cool. Glad I, well, I'll put the link uh, to the podcast, to the coffee and to the book. I didn't, I didn't know you had a book. I'm going to buy that today. Um, I'm going to put those links in the blurb of this. So if you're listening, they're in the blurb of this and you can get, get onto them. Uh, and Jody, it's been a fucking pleasure, mate. I'm glad we could make too, it man. after uh, after our lives destroying the first 50 million times of trying to align our schedules. You know, to me, man, I knew this is going to be a good conversation because we went through all that bullshit together. <laughs> oh, and uh, we need to give a shout to Johnny um, Johnny Ball. Johnny, Johnny Ball. Ball. Johnny Ball for connecting. Yeah, well, he made the intro. John, dude, that you know what. I don't know how we forget these things, right? As individuals, but so Johnny's one of the guys I want to send coffee to. And he's one of the guys who I talk to about this stuff, right? Because like he was in a similar position where he, you know, he was working like the Simic and all that, you know, when he got, I don't know what I'm allowed to say. Sorry, Johnny, but you might have to delete that. Right. (laughs) But that's the point. We're all having the same conversation. Right. And so we know we're not crazy. Right. Like you're British. I'm a Canadian. uh, And we were, you know, similar backgrounds, but not the same, but we're both kind of going, hmm. Right. Um, So this, this type of stuff is important, you know, and, and I'm going to try and connect you with other guys. And I want to talk to other, other people from your area, you know, like we need to grow these networks, you know, we need to find reasons to talk to each other. And uh, you know, and I really, you know, one of the things Johnny and I are actually working on is like a, like a group forum call uh, with, with, uh, with veterans from around the five eyes and, you know, anybody who wants to join really like, and we just, what do we uh, want to talk about? Sorry. Oh, I was just going to, sorry. I, I know I, I'm, we were trying to wrap up and I'm still blabbing, but. No, it's right. Um, I just, I just, it just popped in my head. I, I met recently, I'll connect you up with him unless you know him already. I don't know his surname. I can't remember his surname. His name's Butch. And he's, uh, he's Canadian. He's Canadian SF, some description, but he's now in London, mate. Be a good connection for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, might I'm not I, last I, I think I remember meeting a guy named Butch because like I, I was never S, SF in title because. For a long time, Canada didn't have a tier two, so to speak. So like combat arms support, like recce, snipers, uh, pioneers, you know, combat engineer recce, artillery recce, armored recce. Like we just kind of all filled in that middle ground, so to speak. Um, But so I think I met him through the connections I made, though, doing the work I did in in Kandahar and stuff. Uh, He's not long left. uh, He's only left in the last few years. Um, yeah, yeah, he's a little older than I am. If it's the same guy, I'm thinking. Of. And he's a fucking mountain as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thick same guy. guy. <laughs> thick, thick. I okay. Thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thick, thick and tall, mate. Great to chat. And um, yeah, let's do it again sometime. Love to, buddy. Anytime. And when I start my show, you'll be one of my first guests. Sweet, sweet. Look forward to it. Have a great day, mate. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Honor to be here. That's it. Thank you for watching H-Hour. If you enjoyed this episode, why not become a H-Hour patron? H-Hour patrons get exclusive access to premium content with guests like the one you just watched. There are private interviews with previous guests and with this guest that nobody will see except for the H-Hour patrons. So before this podcast was recorded, I recorded an exclusive Q&A, a shorter interview structured around eight questions. All the questions were chosen by patrons beforehand, and that interview is online now for patrons. That happens every time. Patrons also get access to all of the episodes before anyone else. They get advanced viewing of the episodes. And you also get other perks and bonuses. All of the information is on charliecharlie1.com. Just hit the menu item, become a patron. It'll show you everything there, including access to the H-Hour Discord community and private 
patron only channels on there. So go to charliecharlie1.com and hit the menu item, become a patron. Easy peasy. If you prefer to listen to your podcast normally, Hey Chower is also on Spotify, it's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Google Podcasts, it's on all of the podcast apps. And if you don't even want to bother with a podcast app, you can go to the, the Hey Chower website, charliechannel1.com, and you can actually play the podcast, video or audio, directly through the website, through your browser. Simples. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a supporter. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next episode. Thank you.